The other side now, Republican Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana, who is a member of the Judiciary Committee. We do have information, sir, that Senator Grassley has said that they would send uh, staff to uh, Dr. Ford's home or any place that she wants in California if that would make her feel better. Do you think that she'll take them up on that um, offer? I hope so. Uh, we've done uh, everything we can to try to accommodate Dr. Ford, um, the, the, she, either her or her lawyers keep moving the goalposts, which is a little frustrating, but I can tell you we, and by we I mean my colleagues who happen to be Republican on the Judiciary Committee, we met Monday, we agreed to conduct a public hearing, uh, we offered, which is pretty unusual, I mean, you got to put this in context, the confirmation process is over. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not being critical, I'm being factual when I say this is an 11th hour allegation. But we met and said, you know, we need to do the right thing here. Let's have a public hearing as Dr. Ford has requested. We'll give her two dates, Thursday or Monday. Um, ultimately, it was decided, I think, by Senator Grassley to do it Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, then we said we can do it publicly or privately. I think we ought to do it publicly, but if she's more comfortable doing it privately, we'll do it that way. Um, I'm not convinced, I know I'm in the minority, that Dr. Ford uh, won't appear Monday. Uh, she's changed her mind a couple of times in this process. I'm not, I'm not being critical, she just well, has. They, her lawyer said last night that she would um, only agree to come if the FBI does a thorough uh, investigation right. into the background check. It, do, would you support the FBI looking, you know, opening up that background check for Brett Kavanaugh, doing an investigation and reporting back to you um, so that you maybe then have a clean way to get to this uh, vote? Well, two, two points. First, I, I know what uh, Dr. Ford said last night, but Dr. Ford and her counsel have said a number of things and then changed their minds. Originally, Dr. Ford wanted to remain anonymous. Uh, then she reached out to give her story to the Washington Post, and mm -hmm. somebody, either on her behalf or not on her behalf, leaked the letter, which I haven't even seen yet, to the New Yorker. Uh, then she took the position she wanted a public hearing, which we've agreed to. And then last night, Dr. Ford changed her mind again. And all I'm saying is that given her behavior, uh, she could change her mind yet, a, yet again. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, I don't have enough information to answer your question directly. I don't have enough information to make that decision. In fact, I don't have any information. Um, and I don't so know anybody FBI, who does it. If the FBI were to provide more information, that could possibly give you what you need? I don't have enough information to make that decision. Look at this in, in its proper context. Every bit of information I have, I don't speak for anybody else, I've received from the media. Basically, right. the Washington Post and the New Yorker. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not being critical of them. They're, they're, they're fine members of the news media. But I'm a United States Senator. It's the Senate, not the Washington Post or the New Yorker or Fox News that has to advise and uh, consent. It's right. the Senate. Right. And I have to do that on the basis of facts and evidence. You and, do. Uh, and and, and we, we've offered Dr. Ford the chance to testify. I, I'd like to do it publicly because I think the American people need to see her and hear her to be fair, and then to see and hear uh, Judge Kavanaugh. And we'll I will see do it privately if she wants, if but I'll do right. it reluctantly. I only want to interrupt you, sir, because we're running out of that's time, okay. but I do, because there's been some progress on an important matter uh, to the American people, and that is the opioid crisis. Uh, I know that you have a lot of uh, skin in the game here when you've been trying yeah. to lead this effort. In just uh, 30 seconds or so, tell them what you think will happen if this bill does actually get to pass. Well, Senator Durbin and I had a bill that we folded into the larger bill, and it basically directs our Food and Drug Administration to stop allowing pharmaceutical companies to make as many opioids as they can possibly sell available to anybody who wants them. Mm -hmm. uh, use a little discretion and start considering the fact that we have an opioid crisis in this country and, and, and to direct the FDA to do its job. Certainly, the American people are worried about that crisis, and we appreciate you coming on today to talk about both issues. Uh, Senator John Kennedy, thank you. Thank you.